everybody, this is Anna and this is my knitting and crocheting podcast. My last episode is over a month ago because knitting mojo was down, I was at the hospital, I worked a lot and you asked so many times when do you upload your next podcast episode and I said to myself today is the day. So welcome to all the returning viewers as well as the new who want to check me out. I hope you will enjoy the show. I will pretend as if there wasn't that crazy long gap between the last and this um, episode. So we will start. So what I want to show you uh, today is finished objects. I have a half finished objects, some works in progress. I want to show you some hand knit, hand crocheted incoming goodies. Uh, we have to talk about our knit alongs. Maybe you see some yarns over here because um, there will be a winner drawing very soon in our current knit alongs. And I will answer some Insta Knit Night questions. Okay, let's start with my finished objects. The first one is the one I have finished the mo most recently and it is the tiniest one. <laughs> and I will show you this tiny little guy. This is a so-called blue bird of happiness. He isn't blue. He is pink and gray. It's simply from a leftover um, from an advent calendar. This side is not perfect. Unfortunately, there was like a gap in my knitting. I don't know why. But this is very pretty. Um, Bluebird of Happiness, that is uh, what the pattern is called. I have knit three or four already in the past. Mostly I gave them away. Only one I kept because I can't give all the cute things away I knit myself. <laughs> and yeah, it is part of the Harry Potter knitting and crocheting house cup. One of the homeworks or assignments had something to do with birds. Um, I have forgotten the right English name, but it was something like foreseeing future by the sword of the bird and the way it's flying <laughs> towards you or you see. It's like if there is a cat um, crossing the street from right to left it means this and from left to right it means this, something in that way. And then I thought okay why not making a tiny little bird and it was very much fun. I stuffed it with lavender and, you know, the stuffing polyester thing. And I love lavender. And he is so cute. Yeah, with the tiny bird belly. <laughs> that is my first finished object. Some of you said, oh my gosh, you did that. Amazing and so on. But you guys, it's not complicated. It's not complicated at all. If you are not used to DPNs, then, so DPNs are double pointed needles, um, the old fashioned ones our grandmas used to knit socks with. Um, if you're not used to that, you shouldn't start with such a tiny fiddly thing because you have increasing and decreasing going on. Sometimes you only have one or two stitches on one needle and on the third needle you have like 10 stitches. So that's not the best beginner project for DPNs. But if you are already used to DPNs, go for it. Or if you are starting with DPNs and you want to check this out, maybe use a thicker weight yarn and thicker DPNs. I, I think if you use 5mm DPNs, it's a little bit easier and sturdier to knit this. And you get a bigger bird, so why not? Check this out. It is so much fun. I think it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I haven't find, found um, another source. For those of you who are not on Ravelry, you pretty much have to Google it. Maybe you find it there. My next finished object is a vanilla pair of socks. It's vanilla because I wanted to showcase the yarn because I have I wish I wanted to knit with this yarn for many years and finally I have received this yarn. It's Peyton's Croy Blue Striped Ragged and I have received this for Christmas um, from Amy from the Noble Character Crafts podcast. And here you see 
the pair. <laughs> And I think I showed you the first finished sock already in the last episode, but now they are done. What did I do? I, so you did see, I flipped this just to, that you can see everything. Um, I cast on 64 stitches. I am using two and a half millimeter needles because that is a normal workhorse yarn. I think that is the phrase you always use, right? <laughs> I can't, mostly can't use two and a half millimeter for indie dyed yarns because this merino indie dyed yarn it often is very, I call it dry. It's dry and thin. And these workhorse yarns, I don't know why, are fluffier, so thicker. So two and a half is perfect for that. And then I only knit a long leg, always around 20 centimeter. I knit a slip stitch heel in a contrasting yarn. The yarn isn't so great, I have to say. I washed I have washed this pair this pair of socks once because I have worn it. And it felt it, it did felt a little bit. So that's not great. Yeah, and I think although I did this slip stitch heel and had more stitches here the striping is just fine. You see this stripe is a little thinner, but you don't have to be concerned or wor worried about breaking the color pattern, so to say. And you don't have to knit a short row heel to keep the pattern of the yarn. So it's very pretty. I really like it. And I love, I love to wear them. They are warm, they stay in shape, they are nice, soft, so it's it's not merino yarn but it's for sock yarn it's very soft in my opinion. It's great and I can't wait to knit my other four balls of Peyton's Croy I have received from Amy. My next finished object is also a pair of socks and this time it is made out of opal sock yarn from the subscription I have received in March. So this is not available for purchase yet. Maybe it will be if I find out it will be available for purchase. I will keep you updated on that definitely. I have done a 2x2 two two ribbing, the same stitches, same needles and then I went on with 4x1 ribbing for the leg. Oop. A contrasting slip stitch heel as always. I have really changed my mind on that. I will never ever, never say never, I will never ever knit a short row heel again. The fit of a real heel flap and gusset is so much better. I don't know what I was thinking. So yeah, um, same here and contrasting toe. There is not so much to talk about. Opal sock yarn is really, really great. I must say, at the moment, and Peyton's Croy, I have only this one pair of socks. But if I have to choose a sock yarn, I want to knit the rest of my life. And I really enjoy wearing and washing because it stays, like, nice. <laughs> I have to say, Opal sock yarn is my favorite sock yarn. Really. I love all the pretty hand dyed yarns, but I prefer to use them for something else than socks. I don't think that hand dyed yarns, the ones I have used, even my own hand dyed yarns, I wouldn't prefer them to knit socks out of them because in my opinion, these sturdier yarns are much more practical for everyday life to wash them easily. I don't have to think about where I go with my socks because sometimes I even go on the balcony or the terrace only on socks or the uh, floor is a little bit dirty because I have a dog. I don't care because I can wash my socks as many times as I want in the washing machine without worrying. Um, and they keep me so warm. The opal sock yarns keep me so warm as the Peyton's Croy, the more rustic yarns. I'm a big fan. And the pretty hand, um, the pretty um, hand dyed, indie dyed yarns, I prefer using for, for example, uh, blankets. Well, not 
no, my best blanket is out of opal yarn, but for pullover, shawls, hats, not mittens. So for more delicate pieces, yeah. Okay, I'm happy, happy, happy. Now we come to my <laughs> half finished object. Guess what? It's a sock. This sock is also opal yarn, also from the subscription from March, as the red one I showed you. Um, this one is, an, I have, in, with this one I have knit a pattern. The pattern is called, I pronounce it German now, Portos. If I would, if I pronounced it English, I would say Porthis. <laughs> but it, I guess it's a French word because it is, it is one of the names of the three mus musketeers. Musketeers? <laughs> so, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, it's very easy. It looks more complicated than it is. It is very similar to, wait, I have it here, to the surprise uh, socks I have already knit and I have them here. They are very similar in my opinion. The only difference I can see is in the surprise socks, both are free patterns by the way, in the surprise socks you have these ridges over two rounds and here these ridges, also three, are only one round. Is there another difference? No, not really. <laughs> I can't find another difference. But it acts a little bit differently. So, yeah, this is a part of a knit along in the Opal subscription group, which is called, um, and the knit along is called um, Musterschlacht, Pattern Battle. So, they ha we uh, vote for one ball out of the subscription, one, as so three of the six balls are the candidates and you have to vote for one and the one voted is the one you have to knit up. Everyone has to knit another pattern. You have to announce the pattern and you, every pattern is only um, possible to choose once. And I was so happy and glad that my pattern was... Um, so I was one of the first ones who entered so and I said I want to I wanna knit this pattern and no one else wanted that before. Yeah, this is very pretty, very un untypical opal yarns. Typically opal, that is also already very untypical, but mostly it's red and blue and turquoise and very heavy color combinations. But this, this is uh, lilac and creams and a little bit more, yeah, on the more feminine side, in my opinion. Yeah, slip, slip, she slip, stitch, heel, normal bunchbitze, we call this way of decreasing. Yeah, and I am already, now we come to whips, on the second sock. I could have finished that, that already, but I have something, something um, going on I will talk about very soon. So here is the second one. It is very squishy. I have turned the heel. I have decreased all the stitches already from the gusset yeah <laughs> and now it's only the pattern on the upper side of the foot and stocking it on the sole so that that pattern is very um, intuitive so I would say after I think it took me two or three repeats of the pattern and after that I was able to knit this without looking on the pattern because the knitting tells you what you do what you have to do other people i think would have realized it by knitting one repeat but i'm a little bit slower so now i can knit this while i rewatch one of my favorite series which is called bones i also really enjoy the books by Katie Reichs Katie Reichs i don't know how you pronounce this word because it looks like a German word and we would pronounce it Reichs. So, 
Katie Reich's, Katie Reich's <laughs> Bones. It's a very lovely show. No, not lovely. That is not the right word. Very exciting. And you learn so much about anthropology. Or do you say anthropology? I don't know. Anthropology. My next work in progress is a minis project. Uh, as you know, I am knitting my own way of the Cozy Memories blanket. And I have finished another color block. I was knitting... Oh, there are many ends too even, sorry. <laughs> um, I was knitting the pink rose color block. Oh, it smells like tuft woolens. I have tuft woolens in that bag. <laughs> and yeah, this is a 5x5 five five square. In yeah these girly colors. I, because not everything is rose, you know. Here's only a little bit of pink, but it, it had, it has this vibe, you know, <laughs> this pink vibe. Uh, some of the yarns here, for example, this is my own hand dyed yarn. Um, these two are red, my first regia, a baby colorway, um, and the rest I have received in advent calendars and swaps. And this is Hermione from No Makers. Hermione. And on the back you see there are still ends to even, but I really don't mind that. If I only knit one square and I know I will put it away for a few days, I would sew in immediately the end. But if I'm in the flow and I knit one square after another, I don't wanna sew in the ends right away. So. I go on knitting, 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 knitting. And the next step I have to do is frame it with white. I have showed you a thing in the last episode or the one before. I frame it with white, a white yarn. And then I start the next color block. And I have picked these kind of colors. So more grace and I don't know if I will if I will is so wrong. I don't know if I choose to use these very pale ones. I think I stay with the dark gray and black ones. Yeah. Okay. And I still have this in my Christmas bag I have received from a Little Robin Cottage. She makes the loveliest bags, I have to say, and I, I really like that so much. And be, it is in a Christmas bag because I have received and I have kept my minis from the advent calendars in here. And now it stays in this Christmas bag because Christmas is always in my heart. You know that I love Christmas, you know that I think about Christmas the whole year, throughout the whole year, and I am already preparing something very special for the Christmas season, or let's say for the Advent season. I'm sorry, I'm watching out for birds because I have put up new a new bird feeder. <laughs> and like a swimming pool for birds. I don't know what this is uh, in, uh, in English. Okay, <laughs> so my next um, work in progress is a secret design um, project. So I will try to show you without giving too much away. Hmm. Wait, <laughs> how can I do that? Okay, I will... I won't show you more. <laughs> that was kind of nothing, but I wanted to show you, oh, and I can show you the yarn. It is sparkly. It is only my design yarn, and I wanted to um, use a unicolored yarn, and I wanted to use something that is sparkly because of Christmas. You could use pretty much every kind of yarn, but not too busy, because here are patterns are going on. I will tell you a little bit of about that, so you can prepare yourself for that. I want to host a mystery advent knit along in December, but not a typical 24 clues and you will be stressed out by the 
middle of December because it is the most stressful month in the year for most of us. But I want to... I, it will be kind of an advent calendar, but not as stressful as every day another clue. But it will be something like that and it will co um, contain not only... So the clues not only will contain the pattern clues or the pattern bits for whatever project that will be. Um, but also things for your Christmas spirit to get in the mood for Christmas. I think I will leave it like that. If you are interested in that, stay tuned. <laughs> Maybe I will talk about it. Uh, I will talk about it in when, when we do Christmas in July. Dana Ray makes. She has a lovely um, store on Ravelry. She is doing a Instagram knit along for knitting all the Christmas things, Christmas in July. I will definitely take part in that. So maybe, um, and in July, definitely, I can tell you that for our Hugo Feed call, it will, the, the July's prompt definitely will be Christmas in July. So dig out all your Christmas yarns <laughs> already. Yeah, so if you, I hope you are excited about my secret designing project. I have never designed something before for other people. I have here and there did some modifications or yeah something like that everyone is doing that right but I wanted to do something special for Advent um, and it will we will do fun stuff it will include it will include um, tutorials and something like not live knitting but some let's sit together, knit and talk a little bit content. So it will be very interactive. So I hope you will enjoy it and I'm looking forward to that so much. I have started to design this like yesterday in the morning. It, this inspiration hit me with my first cup of coffee in the bed because I am on holiday, so to say. So I'm off work for a week and it is amazing what happens to your creative brain when you have no work to do, no work for like, you know, your professional work to do. It is amazing. <laughs> so I was laying in the bed and I opened my iPhone. You know, you have this notes uh, app on the iPhone and I was writing down everything that came to my mind and I started designing it. And it so I designed it the whole day and t today, no, yesterday I cast on and today I knit everything I have designed so far and we will see how this goes and I'm looking forward to that. This will be so amazing. It will not only be a pattern, it will, as I told you, will have tutorials, it will have something like vlogmas um, with, with it. So like, you know, fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it it is, to be honest, it is something I was always looking for because I love taking part in knit alongs, especially mystery knit alongs. I love mystery. Knit My last mystery knit along was, was the starting point by Holy Locatelli. I've I don't like the Stephen West patterns, so I never can take part in his mystery knit along. And it seems like everyone who is knitting his patterns, uh, s s everyone says it was so much fun, and I I'm happy that I did it, but I will never wear this object, so I don't like that. So. What I am designing is, for two reasons, everything I was looking for, for an Advent project. It is doable in the given time. So let's say in 24 days. It is doable because it's not 24 clues. It's not even 12 clues, you know? Um, so you will have enough time to do that. It will be ready. It w You can finish it before Christmas so you can give it away as a g gift or even uh, enjoy it the days already the days before Christmas because it is a Christmas object so to say because it is an advent calendar kind of thing you know uh, so it's something for you it can be something for you or for another person right in time for Christmas you can do it it's easy it's uh, and it's something you definitely will use it's not crazy and you it's not you don't need advent minis for that. 
actually you only need one skein or one ball of let's say 100 100 gram of yarn the best would be a tonal unicolored or light speckling speckled yarn not not something you, you can use a self striping a real self striping with color blocks everything else would be too distracting from the pattern um, so you can use pretty much every kind of yarn you don't need much yarn you don't need fancy packages you don't need expensive advent calendars so yarn advent calendars for that so you won't have a gazillion ends to weave in it is doable in the time so everything you want for advent it's just a relaxing project you will enjoy and you will be able to share and be in a lovely community with all the other ideas I have. <laughs> okay, I hope you are very excited now and look out for that. And I hope you will enjoy this upcoming advent pattern. But we are, we don't even have July yet, so <laughs> it's, it's uh, still a little bit to wait. Let me check my notes. Um, Oh, there is another work in progress. The last work in progress is <clears throat> this blanket here. Um, let me show you how, how can I... Okay, I will only, only show you half of the width, okay? I have crocheted, wait, on my rainbow blanket. I have made myself a plan how to finish this by the summer. I think I have added... Oh wait, I can see, I think. No, I have sewn in the ends already. I have added... from here all the way up here. It's raining again. It's like autumn outside, I tell you. Yeah. It is cotton yarn. I show you one of the bolts very cheap cotton yarn by superdagane.com here you see the yardage or the meterage <laughs> uh, yeah here you see the care instructions it is very soft cotton mercerized whatever you Everything you can do with cotton yarn is done with this, but it's very soft. It is heavy, but I like heavy blankets. Um, and it is a pattern for a baby blanket. I have crocheted for friends already. And then I have decided I will double the width and double the length and change the colors because I did it. I did it for the baby in rainbow colors. And now this becomes the prettiest blanket I have ever seen in my favorite colors but one row depends on the stitch but one row takes I think no I won't guess now but I think it was one ch chapter of of the Bible I was listening so it was very long <laughs> okay that was my last work in progress. Now I quickly want to show you two pairs of socks and some coasters I have received and these are the first hand knit socks I have received ever. So hand knit socks that were specifically knit for me and in the prettiest colors you can imagine. It is like this blue of the chair here, it's very light blue so pretty, so pretty and contrasting white. I love contrasting white and a slip stitch heel. This is so pretty. This is the perfect sock. You know, it's everything I love about socks. The colors and the heel, the length. It's very true wool. Perfect. And the second pair is also so cute. It's so cute, it looks like sprinkles. So everything in one color. Slip stitch heel. Wait. And I don't know.
know how the toe is called. With these sprinkles. <laughs> so pretty. So, so pretty. It was part of a Easter calendar, like an advent calendar for Easter. These are the prettiest. I haven't worn them yet because I wanted to show you the original shape. And I think I only want to wear them like in... Oh, I see here she did something with the toe. Oh, it seems like it's like... Ah, it's maybe it's knit together from the from the inside. Wait, it's not so easy. Do you see that? Yeah, it looks like as if it was knit together from the inside of the sock. Here's the inside. I don't know. Very interesting. I've never done that. And here is a set of coasters. And this is so great because I use coasters all the time. Not, not hand knit or crocheted ones, just the normal cardboard or, the, or what, cork or whatever it's called. So these are so cute. I have, mo I have a very, so I have white desks or a very nice and fancy wooden desk and I don't want to ruin these so it's good to and I don't want to swipe them every day like a gazillion times so coasters are so perfect. <laughs> I have some pattern news for you. Um, I was knitting in December I was knitting the Country Roads pattern by Nordic Stitches Designs and you said oh no they are not available anymore I can't find them what can I do? They are back. Nordic Stitches isn't designing anymore, but Nordic Stitches patterns are available on Ravelry again and it's so cheap to get the patterns. I have wrote it down. Sock patterns only cost one dollar and shawl patterns only three dollar. So I think you should definitely check um, Nordic Stitches designs out because you won't get it cheaper. I have knit the burrow, for example, the burrow shawl. shawl. Um, so this is a shawl pattern you can get for three dollar now. It is lovely because it is not a pattern but a recipe. So um, Nordic Stitches gives you every step you need to know, so every guidance you want to have, but also the, the freedom of repeating um, the patterns how often you want it or how you can increase the stitches for a bigger shawl or you can knit it with uh, four ply, six ply, eight ply yarn. So it's amazing. I love. I wear this every, uh, every time it, it when it gets cozy. And I think I would need it today. <laughs> it's not spring here in Germany. And I have knit the country roads socks, my Christmas socks from last year, also in opal yarn. You see it on the screen. Everything I guess. So you would receive that also for one dollar. Nordic Stitches designs on Ravelry. Um, you won't get pattern support, I think, but come on. As a German, I have to say, that is not a thing here in Germany. Uh, remember back in the days when you bought pattern books <laughs> and you couldn't contact the designer because you just didn't know who the designer was. You had to figure it out for yourself or with the help of your lo local yarn store. Um, woman, <laughs> seller, whatever. So I heard, I listened to a podcast lately, uh, the Very very Pink Knits podcast. I love that podcast. And Stacy has a very, very strict opinion on that. And I can't, I don't agree with her. I think a pattern designer does not have to offer pattern support. It would be interesting uh, for me to know how you think about that. Write it in the comments down below. So I don't think that there will be pattern support, but amazing well-written patterns and you won't need help, I promise, for so little money. Check it out. Now I want to show you the prizes. Um, I will draw winners for the following. I promised six balls of sock yarn for everyone who has 
not only knit but sent to Germany the welcome baby socks for our pregnancy help center and I thought I will draw a winner now and at the end of the year again. So everyone who has whether posted or sent me a picture of your envelope or box already written the address on everything um, with with the welcome baby socks inside is able to win a prize and I have written down everyone who did this this on a list and I will draw a winner from that list just old-fashioned with drawing a number <laughs> and this lovely lady will receive this package of sock yarns and what is very amazing about that I included from the last opal subscription this ball and two other German sock yarns and this ball. So these two opal sock yarn balls will be included. You can't buy them now. I took them from my opal subscription because I know you all love op the opal subscription box and many of you can't get them in their countries. So um, the only let we have two international sock yarns here. We have West Yorkshire Spinners and I think Lana Grossa was Italian. Lana Grossa. Lana is uh, wool in Italian, but I think it's a German brand. I don't know. So the rest is German sock yarn. So something you might not be able to get in the US or wherever you live. Okay, this will be the prize for the winner I will draw on June 1st for the Welcome Baby Socks. Then I will draw a winner I will draw a winner for the Hüge feet knit along, the main thread, and the winner will receive, wait, I will get it out here, two skeins of a homespun house in Mollig, in Jumbo Chunky. This is Highland Wool and Baby Alpaca in a very pretty blue. Two skeins of that. That would make a lovely hat, I think. The main, um, the main thread of the Hügefeet curl. And for the May Hügefeet uh, thread. So I will draw the winner on June 1st and for, for the May um, winner, so to say, you can, you can win one of my hand dyed yarns with sparkle and another German hand dyed yarn, Fadenbund, that is in English Strand color, strand colorful. It's merino high twist. Here's my hand dyed yarn in the sock base. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Watch out. I will post the winner on Ravelry and I will contact the people on Ravelry. Besides the people who have sent me the information for the welcome baby socks on Instagram. So then I will contact you there. Now we come. Oh, and still a wiggle on, yeah? So the Hügefeet Carl is a year long sock knit along, and we will do it the whole year because it's a year long sock knit along. And now we have May. May is the month of Mother Mary, and she traditionally wears white and blue dresses, and so does 
the priest in the Catholic Church when we celebrate Holy Mary. So that is why blue and white are the prompt colors of this month. Thread, many THs here. And I still have to think about what the prompt will be in June. I haven't decided yet. Uh, well, welcome baby socks knit along also is a year long knit along. Please keep knitting. My colleagues are blown away by all the international shipments we, we receive. We have Australia, Sweden, US. Uh, we have pretty much from all over the world hand knit socks. It is so amazing. It's great. Um, the next I want to do is Oh yeah, answering Insta Knit Night questions. Are you ready? I hope so. I am. I wrote them down a few days ago, so I can't promise you I will have an answer right away. So I might have to think about. Local yarn shop. How close is your local yarn shop and how far would you drive to one? Okay, two questions. My local yarn shop is by car five minutes away. I have never lived so close to a yarn shop, but because of stupid restrictions, because of uh, COVID-19, this shop is closed since, I think, November. And before that, it was open like two months, and before that, it was closed like half a year. So I hope she will get through that time. She does not have um, a website, you can't. Uh, buy her yarns online. It's not allowed here in Germany to pick up yarn, so like click and collect. It's just st stupid. It's it's. I think it's called superstition. I I I sometimes I think people are superstitious about how to get infected by with COVID nineteen. You know, it's like <gasps> someone looked at me. My, maybe I have COVID now. No, it's you know. Infection doesn't work like that. So it's I hope she can She can get through that and the local yarn shop will be there after this pandemic pandemic at the moment our um, Numbers are very very low. We could easily open everything up again, but we don't um, How far would you drive to one? You know <sighs> When I worked outside my home, I was driving my car every day. And when I worked, when I lived in Vienna, I drove my car every day, 45 minutes, one direction and another, and back home, 45 minutes. So when you do that, you easily take your car to go to a yarn shop one hour away because you are so used to that. Now I'm not used to driving my car not even my car, I don't have a car anymore. We share the car because we don't need two cars. Um, now that I'm not so used to that anymore, I really think twice. Do I really need to go there? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't drive that far anymore. I can't, I can't answer that question. I'm sorry. Projects that aren't quite, uh, quite your cup of tea. Maybe a gift you are making for someone or a consignment piece and you really don't care for it. Do you post these pics on Instagram or on your Ravelry page? Okay, things I really don't like to knit. That's a tough one. Gloves, so the ones with fingers. Hmm. Very fiddly ornaments. So regarding the process, regarding the objects, everything that is woolly but has no sleeves or woolly and is cropped. Cropped like you can see the belly button because I don't understand that. <laughs> I think we spoke about that already. Um, but would I post the pictures? Yeah, why not? If I don't like the object because I think it's not pretty or it's in some way disgusting or, or then I wouldn't create that. So everything I make I would post because otherwise I wouldn't be convinced of what I'm doing, right? Yeah. 
Do your knitting and crochet projects change as the weather warms up? No. No, I, I tried to do that last year because I thought it is such a nice tradition to, for let's say, to knit throughout the hot summer month dishcloth. Out of cotton, mini projects, not so sweaty, but no, really not. Mm -mm. I knit everything in every time. Okay, I have more. Two more questions. <laughs> A non-fiber question. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, ice cream. The problem is here. I'm a very boring girl. If I go for ice cream, you know, and you have these 20 or 30, once in Rome there were, I think, 80 different flavors in this cafe. So if I have to, uh, definitely always vanilla, because I love a good vanilla, not with artifi artificial flavors, like real vanilla, with real vanilla inside. So I really have to get that. And, um, hmm, oh dear, I don't know the English word for that. In Austria you call it Topfen, and in German it's Quark. It's what you make cheesecake out of, you know? you you this white creamy substance you put in cheesecake. <laughs> uh, that is something I really like. I'm very puristic with with desserts. So for example, I never use toppings. I like the raw ice cream flavor. So that is why I really like the, or, or fiocco for example. Fiocco is nothing, that, nothing but um, heavy cream as ice. <laughs> so there's nothing, sugar and heavy cream. So I don't know if you have fiocco in in the US, um, but yeah, it's an Italian word. I don't even know what fiocco means, but I really love fiocco. It doesn't. It's like mozzarella. Mozzarella doesn't really taste like something, but I love it. <laughs> I'm very puristic in these things. So vanilla and fiocco and, for example, quark, which I don't know what it is in English. The substance you put in cheesecake. <laughs> The last question, does your yarn pick your pattern or does your pattern pick your yarn? Oh dear, that is so difficult. Ha! Ah, you know, it's always everything, but in most of the cases, in most of the cases, okay, when we talk about pullovers and shawls, then the pattern picks the yarn because I would never knit a busy pattern with a busy yarn just because I definitely want to knit this yarn with definitely this pattern. That doesn't make sense. So if I browse Ravelry and say, oh dear, I want to knit this pullover or this shawl, I will go on the hunt for a yarn that I really enjoy but fits and suits the pattern. But if I knit socks, especially busy opal sock yarn colors, <clears throat> the yarn comes first. And I, I'm always looking for sock patterns like the blueberry waffle pattern or like seed stitch or like every kind of rib. So a very easy, pretty, effectful textured pattern for my busy sock yarns. So regarding socks, the yarn comes first. Regarding accessories and sweaters, garments, the pattern comes first. That was an interesting question. Okay, that was everything for today. Um, no, if you want to... <laughs> okay, there is a story I can tell you. Uh, I was going to podcast earlier. You know, I had I had a little bit of a mojo down. That was the time where I was coloring and I was posting about my coloring on Instagram. You saw that. It's always the case. You know me already. If you watch this podcast for several years, maybe. You know when I don't knit, I usually color. I, I think I never do this at the same time. I don't know why. And then something happened. I, I I suffer from migraine. I just have migraine. You know, very many years in my life I thought 
what I have is pretty much headache. And when I took painkillers against my headache, people just looked, you know, up and down, up and down, and what you 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 take painkillers because of headache? You can't do that. That is chemistry. That's bad for your body. You have to go through that. Can't it's, it? Can't be so bad that you have to take these pills? And I always thought, how? How can they deal with it without the help of a painkiller? I can't. I can't imagine that. And I felt bad about it because I thought maybe I'm not good to my body, you know, and I'm just weak. I'm too weak <laughs> for my headache. And then I had. Um, oh, I have forgotten the English abbreviation. In German, it's MRT. Read the screen. MRI. I know it. MRI. I had an MRI and they told me, oh, you must have migraine, right? Because they found something in my brain, like scars, and they told me, oh, you have migraine. I said, what, 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 wait, what is, what is that? And then they described headaches I always had, and it turned out these are not headaches, these are migraines. And it is totally understandable that I have to take painkillers. So now I know what I have and I'm used to that. And for example, always when the weather and the seasons are changing rapidly, I always get migraine and I always have to take painkillers against it. But sometimes I try not to do or yeah, I try to get through it with essential oils, for example. Yeah. And one day, two or three, three weeks, I think ago, I had migraine the whole day. <clears throat> so I, I knew that I saw this in the weather forecast that the weather will be very changing and windy. And yeah, so I knew I will have migraine. I set up myself for that. <laughs> uh, drank my coffee, used my essential oils on my forehead and in my neck. And then it hit me very bad. I had this the whole day and then like five minutes to six in the six o'clock in the evening. You know, I thought I thought my brain would explode. I have never had such a pain. I, I, I pretty much think that is the worst pain I have ever felt. I don't know if maybe some of my tooth aches when I was little were as bad as this was but this was and it was getting worse and worse and worse within seconds and then my boyfriend came home i opened the door for him and i just was grabbing my my left half of my head and looked down and I, I i said oh i'm sorry i have migraine it will be better soon um and he looked at me for like five minutes and I was like, ah, oh. it was only on the left side. I don't know why. Um, and it was like exploding pain for a very long time, then a very short break. And then again, exploding pain. And then he called the ambulance and I said, no, 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 I don't want to go to the emergency room. I don't want, don't call them. But he was good and he called the ambulance and he described what I had and he offered them we can drive ourselves to the hospital because it's not so far. Um, he was there, he could drive me. And they said, no, no, stay at home, we will come. <laughs> and they came. <laughs> Six people and two cars and a helicopter came <laughs> to catch me. <laughs> okay, uh, what I didn't know, the symptoms could have uh, it could have been a sign for brain bleeding and that is why they sent the helicopter so if I had if I had brain bleeding I would have get they would have um, flown flown me to the hospital within I don't know two or three minutes and you need 20 minutes by car and I think at that time you can be like so damaged that you will never be able to think and to to work properly anymore so then I sat there and I was like, oh, I was just, I was dizzy and I was sick. I was so sick. I didn't vomit, but I, I was so sick and I had so much pain. Um, they did all their things with all these machines, blood pressure, and then this, everything. I, I yeah. So the doctors said, okay, everything is fine. 
they will drive you to the hospital. It's no brain bleeding. Everything is fine. It might be migraine. Um, yeah, and so they drove me to the emergency room and I got medicine there and I, I think it took the whole horror story I think took four and a half hours or so so from the from the first pain and uh, Leaving the emergency room So it was it was also kind of funny because <laughs> When I was at the hospital it was already getting better and I got you know when you get IV when you get your medicine IV, I think it's called, right? Intravenous, we say in German. Well, in Latin, it's Latin, to be honest. Um, the problem was this bag with the medicine wasn't like on a portable stand you can walk through the hospital with. It was, it was like on on the ceiling. There was like something, and it was attached to like the ceiling. <laughs> and you know the. the the helper there, it wasn't the doctor, it was some kind of helper. He made this and said, if you feel better, say it. If you feel worse, please say it too. But he left and then I realized, oh, he is, he is nothing I can push. He is not a button or something. I can't, I can't say anybody that I'm feeling better because I was alone in that room and the door was shut. <laughs> okay, and I was waiting and waiting and the bag was empty already. The medicine was in my body. I was feeling well and I wanted to tell them I gotta go to the loo, man, <laughs> and I want to go home. I'm feeling fine again. So I was shouting, hello, hello, is there somebody, hello, and no one was coming. Um, I don't know what I was, what I was doing if I had massive pain, I don't know, but everything was fine. I just wanted to go to the toilet, you know, and home, I wanted to go home. Um, yeah, so I thought the other guys, the tough policemen in the thriller movies, they always wipe it out and go without seeing the doctor and they go home <laughs> in their hospital garments. So no, I was just, there was a clipper and I turned it off or put it off and this, you know, this see-through cable, I <laughs> wiped it around, I, I, you know, I wound it around this bag went on the hall and said, hello, is there somebody? I really need to go to the toilet. <laughs> it was so funny. I was feeling fine again. And then, okay, he showed me the toilet and I think 30 or 40 minutes later, the doctor came because I wasn't allowed to leave the hospital without the doctor has seen me. And yeah, he, the needle was away and I could go home again. And it was like sore muscles in my head the next two days. Like after training, you know, when your muscles are so hurting, my whole brain was feeling like that. So when you have migraine, I think it's like the brain is always this, these contractions, and you feel that the days after that. So nothing, nothing bad. No, not nothing bad. It was bad. It was very painful, but nothing uh, dangerous. And after that, I said to myself, Anna, you have to relax now. You have to go slow. I, I worked again. And so after the weekend, I went to work again. It was on the weekend. So it was Thursday night. Yeah, I only was off work for one day. So I started working again, but I relaxed and slowed down. And I didn't podcast <laughs> and I didn't knit and, and so on. So yeah. That was my hospital story. <laughs> it was funny and and dramatic at the same time. You know, I look out of the window and behind our terrace there is a big yard. It's not our yard, but there is a yard and it was everything was vibrating and suddenly there was a helicopter in this yard. <laughs> and I was asking my boyfriend, what 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 is going on? Is that for me? <laughs> So that was also a little bit frightening in the first moment because as I thought, oh, maybe I have something something very serious that they sent the helicopter, but no, it wasn't. <laughs> and they were, everyone was very nice and friendly and yeah, the healthcare system in Germany is amazing. I don't know what you would have to pay in the US for that. I think you, this, everything that I received on that day was a, worth around... 10,000 euro, I would say, with everything I have received. Um, yeah, and here 
our health insurance uh, pays everything. So I really love my country. Germany is amazing. Germany is so <laughs> amazing. Yeah, D that is a good word for c finishing up this episode. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you will participate in all our knit alongs. Keep an eye out for drawing for me drawing the winner on June 1st and maybe we will see each other in two weeks. Happy knitting! Bye bye! <laughs>